Welcome back, everyone. Every summer, I love making a little bit of jam. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Jam's just not for putting on top of toast. It's true, Jess. And here to share some amazing recipes from her new cookbook, Jam Bake, is pastry chef and master preserver, Camilla Wynn. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, we're delighted to have you. And unlike Jess, I have actually never made any type of a preserve before. So my first question might be pretty basic, but can you just explain what the difference is between a jam, a jelly, and a marmalade? Um, so I get that question every time I teach a class. Um, they're all fruit and sugar, but jam is cut up or mashed up whole fruits uh, with sugar. And then jelly is just the fruit juice cooked with sugar. Okay. Uh, and then marmalade uses the whole citrus fruit, so the rind and everything. Now, when a lot of people make jam, they go through that whole process of, of boiling their jars and the lids and so on. But you have a, a streamlined process. I, I'm hoping you're going to share that with us. Yeah, so I always want to make preserving more accessible to everyone because I want everyone to do it because it brings me such joy. I just sterilize my jars in the oven. So they're right in there right now, 250 degrees. When our jam's ready, we're gonna pour it in and it's hot enough that it's gonna right. sterilize the lid itself by flipping it upside down. Of course, of course, this is so exciting. <laughs> that is a great tip. It's a lot of time. Very, I can't wait to do it. I have to say that's exactly how I now make jam. I never make a whole bunch in one go. What I do is I live close to a, several green grocers and they often have discounted fruit, which is amazing in the summer because I'll buy a basket of fruit that's already perfectly ripe and away I go, add some sugar, add some, maybe some lemon. But I'll tell you what I never add. I never do the whole pectin thing. Does that make me a bad jam maker? <laughs> um, so you know what? I never use pectin hardly ever as well. Um, because I find that usually its intended purpose when we add commercial pectin is to thicken a jam artificially before it really cooks down and concentrates the essence of the fruit. You just end up with a lot more water trapped in there, basically. Pectin is a naturally present polysaccharide in fruit. So they all have it, but to greater or lesser degrees. But I have to tell you, I do counsel people not to buy the discounted overripe fruit. And that's because the riper fruit is, the less pectin it contains. So oh I Oh my gosh. It's just so to be a bit underripe? Yeah, you actually want 75% perfectly ripe and then 25% slightly underripe. So it's going to feel weird to put like a whitish strawberry or greenish apricot into your jam, but actually that's going to bring a whole bunch of natural pectin into the mix that's going to make your jam gel really easily. Okay, Camilla, today you're going to be showing us how to make a strawberry and passion fruit jam. And you actually see that strawberry jams uh, tend to be the more difficult ones to start with because of their low levels of pectin. Um, but it's often the one that novices first try to master. So teach us how to not make any mistakes and to master this jam. So it's true because it's a classic, that's where everyone starts. And then it's quite difficult to master in fact. So number one, uh, you would want to pick those 75% perfectly um, ripe strawberries and 25% underripe. Although you know what? Using frozen strawberries is also a really great option. So to be hands up, I just, dump my strawberries whole into uh, my pot or my bowl with the sugar and the lemon juice the night before. Um, I'm always very busy slash very lazy and want to read novels instead of chopping fruit. So this way the sugar just naturally draws the juice out of um, the fruit. Sugar is very attractive, uh, so water loves it pulls that juice out, uh, and then all the sugar is dissolved. We have no chance of scorching it. Um, and then personally, I just like to use my hands to squish yes. uh, the strawberries. And actually, for me, that's the optimum texture. You have like some that are totally broken down. You have some just like really irregular chunks. Woo, it's almost ready. You know when it's spitting <laughs> that it's almost ready. <laughs> And then because strawberries are so sweet, I think passion fruit marries really well with them because it's so acidic. 
and it brings like those little black flecks. I love those seeds. It kind of looks like polka dot in the jar a little bit, but even passion fruit, when you cook fruit, the bummer is that it loses some of that acidity that makes fresh fruit so delicious. And so what we're gonna do actually when the jam is ready is just stir in a little bit of citric acid and that's gonna bring oh. back some of that fresh fruit vibrancy and make the jam super delicious. Now you write in your book that uh, a lot of people find it very difficult to know when their jam is actually done. And I totally agree. I Some people use a thermometer. I just use like the, I dip a spoon into it. And if it sort of clings to the spoon, I'm like, yeah, looks good enough for me. But you actually have a foolproof test that you're gonna show us right now. So let me grab a plate from the freezer. Okay. <laughs> so cool. Feel like we're just yeah. like right there or with you in your kitchen. It is. Okay. So we're gonna take a teaspoon of jam hot bubbling dangerous jam uh, and put it onto the plate and then back in the freezer for two minutes. Okay. okay. And so you're looking for a particular consistency when you pull it out after those two, two minutes? Is that what it is? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it horizontally across the plate. And I always change what I say in classes, but lately I've been saying it should wrinkle like a silk robe on the dock of Harry Styles' yacht. Oh, I love it. That is an image. <laughs> She's a wordsmith too, obviously as an author. Okay, I think it's ready. I think we can check. It's like a big reveal. I love it. I'm gonna give it a push. Yeah. Is it like, oh, are you yeah. satisfied? It's wrinkling. And then you can do a second test. So the Moses test, you part it like the Red Sea, and then if it doesn't come back together, you're good also. So <laughs> I love it. Okay, so Camilla, all the preserves in your book come with a pair of recipes for baked goods, which is so wonderful. So for example, this particular recipe for your strawberry passion fruit jam, you make an angel food cake with it, and you also make these amazing looking donuts that you sent us to try. I don't even know what to make of this, but uh, I want to eat it. So tell us all about it while we do. Um, so I found this recipe in my granny's recipe clippings um, for angel biscuits. So it's a yeasted buttermilk biscuit. And I said to myself, well, I bet that'd be really good if you deep fried it. So and you're these are- yes. holy. Oh, I, these are really quick yeasted no, no, buttermilk no. biscuit, <laughs> fried and then um, oh. just stuffed with the jam and tossed in sugar that's mixed with a little bit of freeze dried strawberry powder. I can't even. Oh, this, this is so, so good. good. Like everything should be stuffed with the jam. So I love making jam. I love making a cocktail, but I've never thought about combining these two beautiful worlds together. But you did in your cherry Negroni jam which sounds incredible. Will you tell us everything about it? So sour cherries in Ontario, lots of them, and they go super well with all of the ingredients of the classic Negroni cocktail. So gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth. So with this cherry Negroni jam, you also sent us some beautiful cookies. That, tell us about uh, this type of cookie and how you use the jam in it. So that's a classic cookie called an empire cookie that goes by many mm. other names, Belgian biscuit, double biscuit. Um, so traditionally filled with raspberry jam and then iced. I filled them here with the cherry Negroni jam. And then instead of using water in that glaze, I used some gin uh, and top it off with a cocktail cherry. Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> it's so fancy. <laughs> Oh, I love it. You. Camilla, I think Cynthia is going to be making jam this summer. We can't thank you enough for this. This has been incredible. Well, I sincerely hope that's true. This has been amazing. And, and for everyone watching, don't worry, we're going to have all of these recipes shared on our social media channels. And if you want to get your jam bake on, don't forget to grab the cookbook. We'll be right back.